you um, about how I got involved in the industry. I'm going to tell my st the story of my first internship, and I'll pick out a couple of things that I think might be interesting or relevant um, as lessons along the way. And I hope it's I hope it's helpful for you guys. So, 25 years ago, I just graduated from high school. I was all signed up to go to college. I thought I was going to study chemistry. And before I went to college, though, my, my dad said, you know, you should go work for your big brother. He's, uh, he had just started as a trader in the Euro Dollar Options Pit. And so I had a summer job working for him. I had taken um, a lot of math and science in high school, all that I could. And I had really good chemistry and calculus teachers. And I thought the math was pretty cool. I had also taken economics. And I had a textbook understanding of supply and demand curves. I'd heard of the Federal Reserve. But I was by no means any expert in this, in this field. And I, every once in a while, you know, my brother was very much heads down, very focused on trading. But every once in a while, he'd, uh, he'd come by and he'd talk to us about what was going on. And he'd be like, you know, and, and the Fed March straddle spread, and the, and the D's call stupid. And we're all like, you know, we have no idea what he's talking about. So <laughs> there we are. I showed up, first day, trading floor. What is it like? It was intense. It was amazing. Everything's urgent. The attention to detail is so crucial. You have to get everything exactly right. Now, now everything's automated. For the most part, things are automated. And we try to program levels and levels of secure safety checks so that errors can be minimized. But in those days, everybody was just standing. You know, they were just humans standing in the trading pit trying to make decisions. And mistakes happened. I mean, there was just there was a lot of adrenaline, a lot of pressure. There were hundreds of people crammed into these small spaces. And each one was doing their own specific function all at the same time. And to near perfection. And I say perfection because you didn't, you didn't get a lot of second chances. Obviously, as people were learning, mistakes are expected. But they're expensive. And you don't have a lot of opportunity to repeat them. If you did mess up when you were learning, you, it was you know, it was upsetting. You wanted to go hide behind a rock and, and uh, not let anybody know. But if you were going to not tell somebody about the mistake, it was going to get compounded. The market was moving. It was going to get worse. So what you had to do, raise your hand. I messed up. Let's fix it. Let's figure out how to make this better. I don't know what the, what the floor washout stats were. Um, but I think that there was a very high turnover rate amongst new people. And I think that's a really good example for why we say markets are Darwinian. The people who do well, they stick around, they invest more money, they make the markets more efficient. People who don't do well, they generally move on pretty quickly to other opportunities. And the market, you know, consequently, the market's changing all the time, and we have to be changing with it. And, and trading is not for people who want to come in and do the same thing every day. Things are, you know. It's, it's moving along, and we have to move with it. And there's a lot of pressure that goes along with that. The floor was an amazing microcosm of, of pure commerce. Everybody was there doing what you know, was the best thing for that, that person's book all at the same time. And that meant that you ended up with a balance of supply and demand, and the prices moved seamlessly from one price to another. And if you're interested in markets, I mean, that's just like, that's amazing that that worked. It was also brutal. It was rough, right? A, a, one mistake could bankrupt a small trader, which is no different today. It's just that on the trading floor, you could see it all happening. The other thing that was interesting about the floor is that with all these things going on at the same time, and all the communication is happening verbally and with hand signals, and you know you try to card stuff up as quickly as you can, but you're you know there's a lot going on all at once. And each one of these trades, it's really a deal. Some of them are small, but some of, some of them are very large trades. You know, millions of dollars changing hand without without even a handshake. Um, and so the rule on the floor was that trust, right? It was all based on trust. 
we do a trade, like I know you're gonna be there. Even if the market's moved and it's, it's, a, it's a bad trade at the end of the day, like it only works if everybody trusts that everybody else is gonna stand up to their word. And, and that was pretty cool that that, that was able to work. Um, the, if, obviously Brian talked about being in regulation, there was, a, there was um, certainly the pit had its own way of policing things, but it was also a self-policing policy where traders wouldn't trade with each other if uh, they knew that somebody was likely to back out, out, was likely to back out of a trade. So it was an honor policy. On another note, today, you know, we're all not, never very far away from our smartphones. They give us data, they do math for us. We don't, we don't really do that much math in our heads anymore. But think about standing on the trading floor. There was not a whole lot of technology. Think about all the things that were coming at you. So uh, you were making markets in all sorts of different options, combinations of options. You, when you got filled on an option order, then you needed to work your futures hedge. Maybe you had a couple of different futures that uh, you were working at the same time. You were working some spreads, the market's moving, you're keeping track of that. Then you have a position that you had brought in from the day prior. There's some derivative nature to that position. You have an estimation of how it's gonna move with price involved, but you don't have a computer screen printing it out, uh, spitting it out at you. You have to do some estimation. And then you've done some trades over the, day, over the course of the day, and they have derivative nature to them, so you have to incorporate that into the position. So you have to figure out all these things at the same time while you're on the floor and the market's moving and people are yelling and screaming. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a lot to keep track of. Um, at uh, a couple years in, we got to the point where our uh, program, our risk program was fast enough that we could do runs intraday. You know, Don, if you guys have seen it, Don tells a story about um, running his risk overnight. So, a few years later, we were able to run it intraday. And so the clerks, we would painstakingly um, add up what every uh, call and put at each strike that we had done on the day, what, how many futures we had traded, you know, where are the prices, where have, how have the vols changed. And um, we would input it all into the position, we'd run it, it would take whatever, 15, 20 minutes. And, triple check, double check, run it down to the floor, hand it to the senior trader, usually done. And he looks at it and he's like, no, that's wrong, right? <laughs> we just had five people and a computer working on it and something that he could do in his, in his head faster and more um, precisely. Which it brings me to another takeaway which I think is relevant to everything we do, which is do a common sense check, right? If you're, no matter what you're doing, and you're focused on the third decimal and this really cool model that you're building, make sure whatever the outcome is, is the right order of magnitude, the right sign. Do the, do the common sense check on, on whatever you're trying to figure out. So back to that summer, how did I like the floor? I, I, I just loved it. I loved the sense of urgency. I loved working together. I loved that what I did mattered. If, when I got it, if I worked really hard and I got it right, it, it, uh, it made the whole system work better, and that was so cool. I also liked that I was involved in macroeconomics and news events. You know, scheduled events would come out. The Fed would make a surprise move. They, it, they did things like that in those days, and the markets would adjust. And my participation in that, however minor, you know, I, I was part of that, and that was, that was cool. And the other thing that was interesting was applying calculus to options markets. Um, I had gotten a copy of Natenberg for Christmas that tells you something about our, our family. And um, <laughs> I would, on the weekends, not during the week because it was too busy, um, spend some time thinking about um, options and first and second derivatives and how the stuff that I had learned in my textbook actually applied to the real world. And just applying math to the real world is, uh, is another thing that I thought was very, very cool. Um, and that's something that, taking a step back, that is amazing about markets is there's so many different things you can apply to markets, right? There's, you can study the fundamentals, you can study technicals, you can use statistics, you can use mathematical models, and now, which you couldn't 25 years ago, you know, there's all sorts of opportunities in computer science and networking and IT skills. And so, I, want, I, would, I wouldn't say that markets are for everybody, but within a very wide range, 
there's, a ver there's interesting ways to apply your skills and your interests to the markets. The other thing I want to impress upon you is how amazing the city is. I, I don't know how, how many of you are just in here for the summer, but I mean, get out there, make sure that you have an opportunity to enjoy the city. Go to a free concert at Millennium Park, go, get out on the lakefront, go sailing. <laughs> um, you don't need to spend a lot of money, and you're only here in the summer, so you don't need to enjoy the darker months. Um, but that, that was something that I really enjoyed about my internship as well. So suddenly my 10 weeks were up and I had to go off to my freshman year at college and I got there and I mean it was fine but it just didn't compare to the urgency and the excitement and the relevance of what I had experienced working in Chicago. I was on a free ride so I went ahead and I took all the classes that I could with my free tuition. I didn't follow the path. You know, now we hear all these stories about people dropping out of college to go do something cool. I didn't follow that path. Um, and I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, even though the floor was cool. I went ahead and I studied chemistry. I worked for a graduate student in a chem lab. I quickly realized that I did not want to be a graduate student in a chem lab. Um, I took a bunch of math and econ classes, and I got really interested in economic history, which is where you apply um, statistics or math or data to solving, uh, answering historical questions that, you know, otherwise historians are just debating, but here you are trying to prove it with math. I thought that was pretty cool. But the rate of uh, that things happen in academia is at a vastly different scale than the rate at which things happen in the financial markets, and so that wasn't ultimately what appealed to me. So clearly the trading pits, they're just about gone. The year dollar options are one of the last remnants. And all these stories about you know, hundreds of people doing things that now a bunch of servers can do, it's, it's pretty archaic, it's old fashioned. But I mean, it is like where the principles of this business got started, and, and I think there are still a lot of interesting lessons to be learned from it. So I'll leave you with just two thoughts. Simple, you can apply them no matter where you end up, that, that come from the trading floor. So from being a clerk, if you make a mistake, don't hide it. Go ahead, raise your hand, come clean, let's fix it. The other one, from being a trader, if you make a commitment, if you make a trade, ends up being a bad trade, you're sorry about it. Honor it anyway. Thank you very much.